Today's lesson is Chemistry 1501. We are going to look at quantum numbers as our topic for today. The subtopic is electron configuration. Lesson 101. Let us start. Before we actually go straight to our main focus for today, which is electron configuration, let us go through the basics of elements. We know that we have periodic table, which has different types of elements with different types of properties. Basically, those elements has different symbols and atomic number and atomic mass. With these properties, we can actually differentiate our elements. Now, suppose we look at the first element, which is hydrogen. We know that the symbol of hydrogen is H. And then on top of the symbol, there's a number. And also at the bottom, there's also a number. Now, looking at this notation, we know that, or we should know that, this represents the atomic number and then this represents the atomic mass now the atomic number and atomic mass sometimes the location of the two might be interchanged so you should be able to determine or see the atomic number and atomic mass normally the atomic number is less than the atomic mass so if it happens that you see something like this, just know that this will be your atomic number. Our main focus for today will be basically on the atomic number. We know that there's also a number located here, which is the electronegativity. But for today, let us focus on atomic number. Now, atomic number tells us a lot of things. The atomic number represents the number of electrons and the number of protons this element has. For example, hydrogen, the atomic number is one. So this simply, this simply means that hydrogen has one electron, one proton. And then hydrogen is also element number one since it has one electron, one proton. Helium element number two two protons two electrons lithium element number three three electrons three protons i hope you can see the trend so it simply means that element number five which is boron will be will have five electrons five protons element number 20 which is calcium will have 20 electrons, 20 protons, and it's element number 20. The atomic number is 20. Now that you understand the basics of the element, let us jump straight to electron configuration. Now we have this periodic table. As you can see, it's a bit simplified. It's not the normal one or the usual one looking at okay before we get to that we know that periodic table consists of groups which is our columns and then our periods which is our rows and then we normally say this is group number one group number two you may continue here as group number three but let us say this is group number three four five six seven eight and then we have period one two three four five going down now group number one and two which is this one and this this section here this is the s orbital and then here we have the D orbital and then here we have the P orbital and then below we have the F orbital. 
So basically we have different types of orbitals in electron configuration, which is S, P, D, F. And then these are the locations of those orbitals on top of the periodic table. Now under P orbitals, this section, all the elements are in P orbital except for helium. Helium actually belongs here. But it cannot be in group number two because it's a noble gas. It's supposed to be on group number eight. So under 1s, we have two elements. Let us try to explain this furthermore. So we say under 1s, we have two elements, maximum of two elements. It's hydrogen and helium. So these two elements you are going to represent using power 2. Now from 1s we go to the next orbital which is our second period. Under second period 2s we have one, two elements again, 2s, 2. And then from here we need to jump to our next orbital which is p orbitals in period 2. So we have 2p. Now we look at how many elements do we have under 2p. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 2p6. Let me actually write it here. 2, 2p6. From p orbitals in period number two, let us go to period number three. Three orbitals, we have three S, I mean three period S orbitals, we have two elements, it's one, two. Jumping to the next orbital, which is P, under three, we have three P, six. And then from 3P6, we can see that we also have 3D here. So it will be 3D, and then we check how many elements do we have in D orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Under D orbital, we have 10 elements. From there, we go to 4. For S, we can see we have 1, 2. Then we go to 4P. 4P we are going to have 6. And then we go to 4D. We are also going to have 10. I hope you can see this analysis. Now suppose you are looking for the electron configuration of hydrogen. What is the electron configuration of hydrogen? Now we look at hydrogen, it's in group number one, and then it's the first element under S orbital. So the electron configuration will be 1S1. And then for helium, it will be 1S2. Let us look at more complicated elements. The electron configuration of aluminium. Now you start with our first orbital which is 1s. So under 1s we have 1, 2, 2 elements so it's 1s, 2. Then we move on. 2s we have 1, 2, 2s, 2. We move on under 1, 2p I mean we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2p, 6. And then 3s, 1, 2, and then aluminum, that is the location of aluminum, so it's 3p1. Now we can see that aluminum is element number 13, so it simply means that it has 13 electrons. And then what you should know is that these exponents, they actually represent the number of electrons. If you can add 
this exponents they must give you 30 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13 let us look at another example electron configuration of potassium element number 19 so we can see that the location of potassium is here now we need to work out the electron configuration under 1s we have 2 1s2 under 2 has 2s we also have 2 under 2p we have 2p6 under 3s we have 3s2 under 3p we have 3p6 and then under 4s we have 4s1 this is the electron configuration of potassium Suppose you are looking for the electron configuration of bromine. Now, what you, what you need to know is that to determine the electron configuration of the first 20 elements, it's simple, but beyond 20, it's a bit tricky because orbital D will be introduced. Now, you need to write this down 1s. 1s uh, okay so 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p 3d 4s 4p 4d and 4f now the arrangement we start with the first orbital which is 1s we go to the second one we go to the third one from here we go to this one and this one what I'm trying to do is that you start writing 1s 1s2 and then you go to 2s 2s2 you go to 2p 2p6 and then you go to 3s 3s2 and then from there you go to 3p 3p6 and then it's 4s2 and then after 4s you go to 3d 3d 10 and then it's 4p6 let us look at an example uh, let us look at an example suppose we are looking for brown line the electron configuration it's element number 35 so we need 35 electrons now the first one is 1s 1s2 the second one we go to 2s 2s2 and then the third one we go to 2p 2p6 and then we move we move down to 3s2 then we go to 3p 3p6 we move down to 4s 4s2 and then we start again to 3d 3d10 and then we move down to p 4p 4p6 oh no i'm just writing i forgot that we're looking for bromine so you can see that bromine it's under 4p so it's 4p1 2 3 4 5 instead of 4p6 we put 4p5 this is the electron configuration so you can see it's 1s 2s 2p 3s 4 3p i mean 4s 3d 4p so between 4s and 4p we have our 3d 
it's not 3p and then 3d no for the sake of practice let us look at more examples go ahead and find the electron configuration of xenon and rubidium that is xenon and rubidium pause the video work out the question and then play the video to verify your answer now looking at the electron configuration of xenon we can see that we have 1s it's 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d10 4p6 5s2 uh, 4d10 and then we are finally at 5p obida so it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 so we have 5p6 i hope you got this one correct now for rubidium it will be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d10 uh, 4p6 and 5s1 and then we can verify the number of electrons for xenon it's element number 54 so we have 54 electrons so the sum of this exponents must give you 54 and then looking at rubidium it's element number 37 this exponents will give you 37 now that's it for this lesson video. This is Wahula SJ. Thank you very much.